Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. I'm so glad you're here. It's time for a new quarterly card making challenge. Kendra's card challenge number seven. In case you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, it's where you can create 15 cards using just six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper with hardly any scraps left over. If you've heard of one sheet wonders, it's like that, but times six. Plus you can have a chance to win lots of prizes by sharing your creations throughout the quarter. This challenge runs from July 1st to September 30th of 2022, and there are 12 company sponsors this quarter with over $400 worth of prizes that will be given away. I'll share the details on the prizes and how to enter the challenge in just a bit, but real quick, if you're not a subscriber, I hope you'll go ahead and click on that subscribe button. For this card challenge, you would use the cutting templates and card sketches that you see here in this free PDF printable that's available for download on my website. So basically, you'll need to pick out six coordinating pattern papers and assign them to each of the color-coded papers A through F. Then you'll cut the papers using these cutting templates and sort the pieces for each of the 15 card sketches. You'll also need some matching colored cardstock, and then you can decorate the cards with whatever stamps, dies, ephemera, or embellishments that you'd like following these sketches. Now this challenge is not company specific, which means you can use whatever supplies you have in your stash. And if, there, if you're anything like me, you probably have lots of pattern paper, so why not use it? This challenge is a great way to use up those paper pads. Plus, if you use a paper pad that has 24 sheets, that means you can make 60 coordinating cards. That's a lot of cards. The first two here that are red and blue are labeled as paper A and B. All of the measurements are listed for each piece and there are scissors on each template to show which part of the paper needs to be cut first. There's circled numbers on each piece, which indicates which card sketch that that piece goes with. And there's also arrows on each piece to show the direction of how it will be placed on each of the card sketches. You'll notice not all of the arrows go the same direction. So for this particular challenge, you'll want to use patterns that are non-directional, meaning that it doesn't matter which way you turn the paper. Now, if you have a directional pattern, you'll want to use it for papers B and D. Although you can use it for the others, you'll just have to change up some of the layouts for some of the sketches. And then the grayed out areas will be scraps and the triangles are where you'll eventually cut out the banners. Now here are the card sketches. There's a total of 15 cards for this challenge and this page shows the first six. Card sketch one shows pieces from papers A and B and then sketch two adds in a piece from paper C. Sketch three combines A, C, and D, and so forth. That little banner piece can be swapped out with the optional pieces from the cutting templates. And then for sketch six, you'll use an embossed, stenciled, or textured panel. Now many of the sketches are flexible and allow you to use whatever shape or embellishments you'd like, rather than the shapes that are shown on the sketch. And then for sketch 14, it shows two shades of green, which means if you're using double-sided paper, flip it over as long as it coordinates. And then sketch 15 has these two strips attached at an angle, leaving plenty of room to build a scene in the bottom right-hand corner. Now I'll show you the papers that I have assigned for each of the cutting templates. I'm using the Ocean Friends paper pad from Queen & Company, and I'm assigning this directional pattern here with the fish to paper B. And remember, you don't have to follow the sketch exactly. It's just the starting point to get you going. You can change it up if you need to, to make it work with the supplies that you have. There's also instructions on the bottom of the last page with some helpful hints. You can use colored cardstock to create your mats for any card sketches that call for them. And to keep costs down, remember you can cut smaller mats from larger mats that will be hidden behind the pattern paper. Plus you can rotate or flip the card sketches if needed. Now you may have noticed that a lot of these patterns are directional, but the other side of the paper isn't. So as long as you pay attention to the majority of the arrows on the cutting templates, it will make it much easier to assign them. So now I'll show you the best way for cutting the papers using these templates. This is paper A. Look for the scissors on the cutting template. This indicates where you cut first. And since this pattern looks like waves, I wanna make sure I turn it so that it will be facing the right direction on the cards. So you're gonna measure over four inches and make the first cut. 
You can use a guillotine trimmer or one like I have here. Either one works. Just know that you will have to cut some of these at an eighth of an inch. Next, I'm going to turn this and cut this at two and three fourths inches and then at one and a half. Now I've got my pieces one, two, and three. And then for this bottom strip, you'll measure and cut at five and a quarter inches. And then you will turn it and cut the two one inch pieces that go with card sketch six. Now I have these cellophane bags here. They're numbered 1 through 15 for each of the card sketches. But you can also use envelopes or cards or containers, whatever you'd like. But you definitely want to have some way to keep all of these pieces organized so that you don't get them confused or mixed up. Now for paper B, you'll make the first cut at five and a quarter inches, leaving a three quarter inch strip on the end. Again, I'm, I'm using a directional pattern here, so I want to make sure that my little fishies are facing the right way. You'll turn that strip and cut an inch off of the bottom. And of course, the strip will be for card five. And then that little piece is an optional piece that you can put in with the other pattern paper pieces for sketch three. And then for this big piece, you'll want to turn it so that you're on the six inch side and you're going to cut that at four inches. And then these two pieces are for cards one and two. Now I'm not going to put all of these pieces in each of the bags while filming this in order to save time. Now for paper C, I have another directional pattern that I'm using here and most of the arrows on the cutting template are facing the same way with the exception of piece eight. So I want to make sure that the pattern is facing the right way when I make my first cut. And just like paper B, we're going to cut at five and a quarter inches first, leaving a three quarter inch strip for card five. And then we're going to cut off that one inch piece from the end of that strip. And then you'll want to turn what's left and cut the top piece off at one and a half inches and that'll be for card two and then you'll turn the remaining piece again and you'll cut at two and a half inches and then you'll turn this piece and cut it at four inches leaving a half inch strip for card 15 and then you'll cut the remaining piece at one and a half inches leaving the pieces for card seven and eight and of course you can cut the banners out later. Now for paper D, your first cut is going to be at three and three quarter inches. So once you make this cut, you're going to take the left hand or the bigger piece and turn it and cut at one and a quarter inches. And then you're going to cut the next strip at one and three quarter inches and that'll be for card number nine and that piece will then need to be turned and cut at two and three quarter inches which will leave a one inch strip that will need to be turned and cut in half at seven eighths of an inch now these pieces are for card six and then the bottom piece is for card 11. so now you'll take the right hand strip and turn it and cut it at four inches And then you'll turn it and cut at one and a quarter inches. And then these are for cards three and seven. Then the bottom piece, turn it. And this is where you're going to cut three strips and they will each measure five eighths of an inch. And once you do this, once you have your three little strips, this will leave a little scrap piece. And all three of these pieces are for card sketch number 10. 
All right, so now for paper E, your first cut is at five and a half inches. Then you will turn the paper and cut it at five and three quarter inches, which will leave a quarter inch strip on the end for card 11. And then you will slide the paper over and cut at one and three quarter inches. Then you'll take this strip, turn it, and cut it at four inches. The bottom piece will eventually need to be cut into a banner for card six. And then for the big piece, you'll turn it and cut off another quarter inch from the bottom. And both of these pieces will be for card 14. You can use both sides of the paper if you have double-sided paper. And then finally for paper F, with the exception of piece seven, all of these pieces are facing the same direction. And this pattern is also directional, but the back side is not. But I wanna make sure that the sea creatures are all facing the right way before I start cutting. So I can use the back side of the paper for card seven since it's non-directional. But like before, you'll make the first cut at five and a quarter inches. So you'll have a three quarter inch strip and you'll turn it and cut it at five inches. And again, you'll have another optional piece for sketch three. Then you'll turn the big piece and cut off the bottom strip at one and a quarter inches. And then turn it again and cut it four and a quarter inch, leaving another one inch optional piece for sketch three. And then you'll cut the top piece at three and a half inches and turn and cut at four inches. All right, so now that you will have all your papers cut and you've got all your sorted pieces by sketch number, you'll want to match up the pattern paper pieces with matching colored cardstock and create your card bases. Then you can decide how you want to decorate the cards. Now for my cards, I use the Ocean Friends kit from Queen & Company to create 15 shaker cards in ocean theme. I won't show the process of putting these cards together in this video, but I will share that in my upcoming videos. So be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss it. As I show you each of the cards, I'm placing each of the card sketches in the top right hand corner. And while I show the cards, I will explain how to enter the challenge. As mentioned before, you can find the free printable on my website, cardsbykindred.com. It's also going to be in the description box. And the printable includes a QR code or actually a couple of QR codes that you can scan that will take you directly to my Facebook group that's called Kendra's Card Challenges, which is also linked down below. This is where you will upload your photo of all 15 finished cards into the KCC7 official entry photo album. And this is to enter the challenge. There are also separate albums for each card sketch that you can share a photo of each of the cards individually. Now this isn't a requirement to be entered to win, but it's so that everyone can see the cards up close a little better. You can officially enter the challenge up to three times but only once per month throughout the quarter. But please feel free to share all of your creations in the Facebook group if you decide to do more. Now, if you're not on Facebook, you can email me your photo and these instructions are on the free printable. You can also upload your creations to social media using the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 7 so that others can see your creations and be inspired. But to officially enter to win prizes, you will want to upload them into that official entry photo album. I also wanted to mention that there will be a big giveaway hop on July 2nd, where me and 14 other crafty friends will be sharing cards that we made with this challenge, and each of the sketches will be highlighted. I hope you'll hop along with us. Now, if you're watching this after July 2nd, you can search the hashtag KCC7 giveaway hop in YouTube to find these videos and we will break down the card making process for each of the sketches. Now let's talk about all of the amazing prizes that you can win for entering the challenge. This quarter we have 12 company prize sponsors. The sponsors are Colorado Craft Company, Gina K Designs, Cat Scrappiness, Not Too Shabby Shop, Picket Fence Studios, Pink and Maine, Scrappy Tales, Sweet November Stamps, This Calls for Confetti, TLC Designs, Trinity Stamps, and Whimsy Stamps. You can see the full list of prizes on my website, but I really want to thank all of these wonderful companies. 
Now I want to mention a membership program that I'm offering to my channel viewers where you can receive additional perks and benefits depending on the tier that you choose starting at just five dollars a month. I want to thank my current channel member patrons that are shown here. I really appreciate your generosity and support. Patron benefits include a handmade card each month access to a printer-friendly version of the current challenge PDF printable, plus a shout out on all of my challenge videos. Additionally, you can get early access to my card challenges, access to archive challenges, and bonus free printables each month, plus much more. For more information on how to become a member, please visit patreon.com forward slash Kendra's card challenges. I'll have this link down below in the description box. I really hope you'll join us on challenge number seven and share your creations on social media. Now, if you have a YouTube channel and you share a video of your creations on YouTube using the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 7, you'll get two entries into the contest rather than just one. So you have until September 30th of 2022 to create your cards and get them posted to the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group or emailed to me. If you think you might give this challenge a go, leave me a comment and give this video a thumbs up. I'd also love it if you'd share this challenge with any of your crafty friends who might enjoy it. I appreciate you watching all the way to the end of this video. I can't wait to see what you create and I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.